The Bloodstream podcast is made possible by Takeda and is intended for informational, educational, and entertainment purposes only. Please consult with professionals before making any healthcare decisions. So I was like, well, you got to give the people what you want. I don't want to be the MS guy, but it looks like I'm the MS guy. And I just started pumping out MS videos. That voice belongs to Damien Washington, an actor, YouTuber, and advocate for people living with multiple sclerosis. He joins me later in the program to share some of his remarkable story. Open enrollment for healthcare coverage through the Affordable Care Act is open, but it ends December 15th. We're going to talk you through what you need to know and the National Hemophilia Foundation's State-Based Advocacy Coalition, or SBAC program, assists NHF chapters with local advocacy initiatives. We heard about it briefly last week with Joe and Nathan, and we want to give you some more information on how you and your local chapter might go about seeking SPAC support for 2021 advocacy programs. Plus, Natalie's here today. She joins Amy and me for a bonus episode this month and to discuss how the surging coronavirus cases are impacting holiday and travel plans. All that and more coming up in just a moment, but allow me first to quickly say hello and welcome to the Bloodstream Podcast, a weekly show serving entertainment and information to the inherited blood disorders community. I'm your host and bleeder, Patrick James Lynch, joined as I am each week by nonprofit nerd and disheartened Broncos fan, Amy Board. Good morning, Amy. How are you? I am still disheartened as a Broncos fan. I am heartened as like a, a human, just, you know, being a human, disheartened as a Bronco fan. We lost to the Raiders this week. It was not great. It's fine. It's fine. It's okay. Fine. Well, I'm glad to hear that outside of this, you seem to be doing a little bit better. You know, you have to disassociate any way that you can. <laughs> and I'm fine. <laughs> I'm fine. You guys, I'm fine. Disassociation. <laughs> that's a helpful coping mechanism. We'll talk about that on our next <laughs> moment for mental health. Yeah, and we'll get learn. Debbie DeLaruva to talk about <laughs> mental health and football. It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> And pleased to welcome my wife, roommate, and regular contributor, the increasingly pregnant Natalie Rose. Hiya, Natalie. And how do we find you on this late November day? I'm well. As a lifelong Browns fan, I can relate, Amy. So, you know, heart heartbreak's just a part of football for me. But today I'm good. I'm doing really, really well. Um, increasingly pregnant, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, as is very obvious to anyone who is within uh, eye view of you. Well, thank you for uh, being increasingly pregnant and doubling down your November bloodstream efforts. We really do appreciate it. Happy to be here. So there's lots we want to get to. Uh, I do want to first remind listeners that are listening in real time. Today's the last day to order your free 2021 blood feed calendar, which includes bleed or dates of interest, stickers to help you track infusions, clinic appointments, and so much more. Visit BelieveLTD.com slash calendar to order your free calendar by 11.59 p.m. Pacific Today, Friday, November 20th, that's as late as it can possibly get on Friday, November 20th, 11.59 p.m. Pacific, BelieveLTD.com slash calendar. And The Pain Podcast is finishing up its casting for Season 2, chronicling the patient pain odyssey experience. If you've got a story to share, this is your last call. Let us know. Mailbag at BloodstreamMedia.com. Subject, Pain Pod. Amy, what's that email address again? Great. I'm glad that you asked. I'm glad it's in front of me. It's mailbag at bloodstreammedia.com. So impressive. So, so impressive. So, okay, we've got the interview with the high energy and hilarious Damien Washington coming up here in just a little bit. You know, he was in a commercial with Shaq. What? What? Yes, he was in a commercial with Shaq, which is like my dream come true. Also, I think it was the thing I saw and I was like, oh, okay, we can interview him. I don't know if I looked at anything else that was on his resume. He's got a lot of credits, but that was the one I cared about. Well, was, was he like the person in the commercial to make Shaq, like to, like a normal person to make Shaq look, you know, like gargantuan that he is? I always love those people in those commercials with mm -hmm. professional athletes. And I also love like just in normal times, you know, when like an athlete gets injured. I don't love when an athlete gets injured, but when they do and like normal people come out to take care of them and then they stand up and they look like, you know, a Marvel character or something. It makes me laugh. Just normal people. When they have like the pregame uh, routine, like LeBron's getting stretched out by his trainer yes. and you're like, that's the trainer for LeBron? Like this guy, but yes. that guy's probably like, my, he's probably like 6'2", 215, 4% yes. body fat. But next to LeBron, it's like, did they, they didn't, a middle schooler is who they found to train yes. the best athlete in the basketball? 
it makes me laugh. It 100% makes me laugh. In fact, I, I personally think there's like a thing happening on Twitter, but I, I am in this camp that I think there should be like normal people playing at the same time that like professional athletes. So you can like see the size. <laughs> like a sc- different like a side can by like side? You can like appreciate 100%, like the mutant size that all these professional athletes are. Well, you know, we're looking for ways to make professional sports uh, differently compelling during Corona and a fan-free environment. So maybe that's what we start doing. On one side of your screen, you get supreme athletes. And on the other side of your screen, you get the local beer league players. Yes, normal people. Oh, it's great. Uh, so anyway, uh, that's Damien. You'll hear from him in just a little bit. Um, but let's start here. So we have got news about two promising vaccines, two updates um, at the time that we're recording this. One from Pfizer and BioNTech. I didn't know what BioNTech was until I was preparing this. I guess they're the partner of Pfizer on the vaccine. We only hear about Pfizer, but there's this other company too. So their early results indicate their vaccine may be up to 90% effective. And again, this is a vaccine against the coronavirus and COVID-19. Um And there's one from Moderna, whose early results boast a 94.5% success rate, which led Dr. Anthony Fauci, the country's leading infectious disease doctor, to say, quote, these are obviously very exciting results. It is just as good as it gets. 94.5% is truly outstanding. Um, Just to make mention, the Moderna trial has, I believe, 30,000 participants and Pfizer's has 43,000. So decent sample sizes if those numbers are accurate. And so while the hope is that a vaccine is um, on the horizon, until that comes, all we've got is that hope and our best practices to combat the spread that we're facing at the moment. People around the country are having to make difficult decisions about the holidays coming up. And it's not just about whether or not it's safe to get on a plane and will I have to quarantine for two weeks if I enter another state. This is affecting families at even a very local level. And so I'm curious to know from each of you, where, where are your heads at and what conversations have you had with your families about how they're thinking about Thanksgiving and the, the greater holiday season? Uh, Natalie, maybe we'll start with you. I mean, you know, us personally, we've decided not to travel and we decided to stay local. And then my family, who is all together in Cleveland, um, have even decided to kind of do their own thing. Uh, my sister was going to have a big Thanksgiving and now she's not having anyone over. Uh, just a decision she made this week, which I know, like, she's such a big holidays person. She's really bummed about that. Um, But yeah, I think it's, you know, even when you live locally to family, it's, you know, kind of evaluating, um, do you share the same COVID values? Are you living um, the same lifestyles? You know, who are those people seeing and what risks are the people they're seeing taking? And I think it's really hard. Um, and, and, you know, also, too, to, to keep things small, who's who's not invited then? And, like, what kind of drama could that stir up? So I think some people are just that's being... That's when the good start. That's when it, the real good stuff starts picking up, though. <laughs> True. But I also think that that creates a little bit, um, you know, like, the decision just not to do anything. If you're like, all right, well, we, we'll invite these people, but we can't invite these people. And it's like, well, then maybe we should just not do anything because I don't want to deal with that drama. So right. I think people are coming up against that as well. Um, but yeah, it's it's hard. I mean, yeah, just talking about alternatives and, and ways to make it special. We found this fun game called Fibbage, which is so much fun. It's played online and you can play it with multiple households. And basically you come up with these lies and the true answer is actually in there and you have to guess like which answer you and it's crazy questions about topics from history to the creation of hot dogs to like just random trivia and it's so much fun we, we played it when we were in Ohio in September so we put together a Christmas Eve fibbage night Natalie, um, that was that was my life the first week of quarantine with my roommates was playing fibbage every single night this like random game on I think it was on, it's on the Xbox it's on it's like some random app on on, on TV yeah. And uh, we burn out pretty quickly, but for about seven straight nights, we played Fibbage every single night. It's so much damn fun. It is. And, and it's it's appropriate for all age levels, you know, and it's silly. And um, I'm so glad you played. I had never heard of it. And my aunt brought it up and was like, let's play this game. And there's a part of me that wanted to poo poo and be like, no, thanks. And then, you know, I was like, no, I'll just do it. And it was I mean, we got obsessed. We played like seven nights in a row. <laughs> it's very easy. Yeah, we, we, we got quite into it quite quickly. Um, I also like that we chose a game that was kind of built around lying. That was how we as a family were like, you know how we can stay bonded during this and feel like it's the old times? We'll lie to each other 
and then see if any one of us can suss out the truth. I think that's a really nice way to. That's why I'm drawn together. to it. I was like, oh, lying. I was like, that might be actually. I'm gonna. I actually wrote it down. I was like, I'm gonna suggest this. Is your family a game playing family, line. Amy? One hundred percent incorrect. No. Well, you know what? I shouldn't say that. I am not a game person. I'm anti-game, but I'm trying. <laughs> Wait, why to are you be... anti-game? Hold on, why? I hate it. You know, there's like two people in the two kinds of people in the world. There's game people and not game people, and I am <laughs> not a game person. And uh -huh. some of my best friends, as you know, are Chris and Jess Bombardier. And let me tell you something: those two are game people they are. and it caused like a tension in our friendship like when we lived in denver because i was not invited to game night because i didn't like game night That's and a it good was good reason uh, not to be invited 100 percent, yeah so anyway <laughs> but i do think that that is a lovely thing and my i'm trying to figure out how to um create something fun for my family as well. I, I'm not traveling either. And my brother and sister-in-law are nurses. And so they are, they've actually volunteered to work the COVID floors, which have now really blossomed. I mean, Colorado COVID floors in their hospital, they had like two patients, I think, back in the surge of things, like, you know, in March, April, May. And now like 25% of the hospital, both staff and um, patients are infected with COVID. So they wow. are obviously quarantining themselves and like, you know, doing that work. And, you know, so it's, it's anyway, my parents feel isolated. I think, you know, and not in a, not a terrible way, but just in a bummer way. It's just a bummer. This whole yeah. thing is a bummer. And it's, it's about, you know, um, doing our part so we can, it, it's, it's truly about doing our due diligence, you know, of um, staying home and doing this, having patience and realizing that this won't be forever, but this is like the time right now and this is what the holidays are. And so playing a lying game on Zoom sounds delightful. Can't be better. How, how are you, Amy, doing with being apart from your family during this and knowing that your parents may be feeling a little isolated? It's gotta be like, tough. Uh it is it is it it is tough and it's uh you know it's the first time it, this sounds ridiculous it's the first time since i was young that i'm like in another state that, than them um i used to be in the same state and i and i think if i still lived in colorado like i would have been in their you know corona circle you know i would have um they would have been a part of of my circle however um i don't know it's just it's 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 really hard and it's really hard when there is you know kind of a defiance about it too when there's like you know culturally there is a defiance in terms of what is really true mask you know simple things like just wearing a mask and quarantining and those types of things um it just makes it i mean even in my own town it just it just makes it hard it just makes it hard so everyone's making their own decisions and it's the fatigue is there. And I really understand. I mean, the fatigue of all of this, I feel it. I hate it. I hate it. And at the same time, it's just, it feels like it's getting scarier. I don't know. Yeah. It's not a simple time, as you said. Um, and, and ultimately we have to be safe. We have to be smart and do what's best for our families without putting other families in harm's way. So We'll leave this discussion here, and you know we certainly sympathize with the listeners who are like like us, uh, trying to negotiate what this time means for for you and your family, and what what is the right decision. So uh, we feel you on that, and 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 good luck because there's no playbook on this, not none whatsoever. Uh, so we'll leave this topic though for now. We will next week come back to talk a bit more about our Thanksgiving experiences and maybe touch on a little bit of what we are grateful for in this <laughs> wacky year of 2020. But we'll leave that for next week. For now, though, we're going to move on to another timely national health topic, and that is open enrollment for the Affordable Care Act. But before we dive into that, I would like to remind Bloodstream listeners that this episode and actually all episodes of the Bloodstream podcast are made possible by our presenting sponsor, Takeda. And Takeda, as you may or may not know, if this is your very first time listening to the podcast, they have a website, bleedingdisorders.com. And it includes all kinds of info to help you live your best life. But did you also know that Takeda's on social media? What? 
Yes, that's true. So you can check out the Bleeding Disorders community, three words, Bleeding Disorders community on Facebook, Instagram, or YouTube to catch the latest from Takeda Online. And if you check out the Bleeding Disorders community YouTube channel, you can watch my friend JC share her story of living with Von Willebrand disease. Once again, visit bleedingdisorders.com or search for Bleeding Disorders community on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. And for their ongoing support of the Bloodstream podcast, we like to say thanks, Takeda. Thanks, Takeda. Thank you, Takeda. All right. So open enrollment for the Affordable Care Act. It is open now. It closes on December 15th, 2020. That's the last day to enroll in or change plans for 2021 coverage. Before we dive into the specifics of what this period means and doesn't mean, Amy, can you help us understand, is this, what is open enrollment for, you know, you hear open enrollment for healthcare and it's, that's a very broad term. And while this is a very important period for, for people, it's, it's a little bit more nuanced than that, isn't it? It sure is. And um, it's a bit confusing and it's it's difficult for people that want to educate or bring awareness to open enrollment because we can't say, you know, one umbrella date works for everybody. It's kind of a thing. So um, the first thing to kind of think about when you're thinking about open enrollment is that the deadline date for you um, is something that you need to look into yourself to kind of see where your dates fall. The December 15th date is for the federally regulated marketplace plans, and that is state-based. So if your state does not have a state-based, if they didn't create their own marketplace, then you are a part of the federally um, regulated ACA plans and your deadline to renew your plan, to choose a new plan is December 15th. If your state-based um, uh, regulated if, if your state has a as a regulated marketplace like California or Colorado, your dates might be a little bit different. They might be um, at the end of December. They might be January 15th. So it's important to go online and see that they should be very accessible. Those dates should be very accessible. This, of course, is for marketplace plans. So many of our families, um, Patrick and Natalie, have employer-sponsored plans, meaning that they get their insurance through their employer. And for the majority of those employers, those dates are going to be up to the employer. Sometimes you might have two weeks to kind of go through your plan, see if there's anything you want to change to renew, those types of things. Sometimes it might be aligned with, um, you know, a state-based marketplace plan. And then, of course, we have a lot of families, about 30% of our families are on Medicaid. And those um, open enrollment dates are the same as um, state and federally regulated plans. But depending on how long you've had Medicaid, those dates might roll as well. So it is important to know what your plan is and then to find the deadline date regardless Regardless, the one thing we can say is that this is open enrollment season. This is open enrollment season. This is our due diligence to look at our insurance plans. A lot of us um, kind of don't. You know, we just renew. We just click that button to renew. Um, you will be automatically renewed in most of your plans if you don't go through. But because we are such an active community, we are such an engaged community, we know we are so good at this. We know that it's really important for us to go through those plans because they will not be the same. There might be little changes. Um, and so I want to steer folks towards the National Hemophilia Foundation, NHF's insurance toolkit. Um, all of those links that will take you directly to that page will be in our program notes. Um, I'm going to put it on my social media like a crazy person. Um, but they have built this toolkit about choosing your insurance, um, asking the good questions that you should ask about your insurance plan, what documents you need to begin, um, all of that information is so accessible on that website it's very easy to read i actually printed out a whole bunch of stuff it's very easy she to did read. print it i can see there's it she's holding it up for the camera page. And there's also a comparison guide. And I think this is probably the most important thing, even if you do not have a bleeding disorder, just any anybody, it's so important to ask questions about your insurance plan to make sure that what you are choosing has what you need. And I will say, based on experience, um, and then I'll stop this monologue and we can kind of, you know, talk about it a little bit more. But I will say that 
many bleeding disorder services, either drugs on a formulary, HTC um, services, physician services are not in black and white in your summary of benefits. A lot of times it takes digging to find that out. Um, because we are such a rare population, a lot of times it's not going to be right in the summary of benefits. So it takes it takes more work, which is, um, which is tricky. And there are people to help you out. Um, I would recommend asking your social worker at the HTC for any questions. They will be primed and ready to help you. That is their job. And I would also recommend um, talking to your chapter representatives. A lot of chapter uh, staff is very well versed in insurance issues and they can help navigate. And most important, they can get you to the people who can answer those questions. Uh, thank you, Amy, for that excellent overview. So, and really one of my takeaways from what you were just saying, whether or not someone has their plan through the uh, the federal marketplace or an employer, understanding the nuances of the plan, not just automatically hitting renew if you're planning to do the same thing. Like this is a good moment for anyone to just review what their healthcare coverage is and what their options are going forward. So for those for those who are specifically getting their coverage through the um, Affordable Care Act and through these federal marketplace plans, then again, you have until December 15th as the last date to enroll or change. After December 15th, you can enroll or change plans only if you qualify for a special enrollment period. So what is a special enrollment period? It's generally something that's triggered by a life event. So if you get married or divorced, if you have or adopt a child, if you move to a new zip code for school or work, uh, if you're a seasonal worker who's moving again for work, if you're in transition from uh, a shelter or some type of transitional housing, then that is also a life event that enables you to qualify during an, a special enrollment period. For all of this information, as, as, um, as Amy mentioned, we'll have the links in the program notes to NHF's toolkit and at healthcare.gov, which is the uh, the federally run website for the exchanges, at healthcare.gov, you can find all kinds of information, including um, plan breakdowns and estimated prices based on your zip code. You don't have to log in or even have any kind of an account to do that. You just have to put your your, uh, your you just scan the plans and put in your zip code. The other thing that website will do is ask you to identify what state you're from. So to Amy's point about different states have different specific dates of interest, healthcare.gov can also help you track down that information um, if you're looking for that info. So lots of tools to help you navigate your healthcare coverage moving from 2020 into 2021. Uh, Amy, Natalie, anything that we didn't touch upon that we should before we close out this segment? I was just going to say how sneaky those dates can be sometimes. I mean, uh, just last week, Patrick and I are through my employer, and <laughs> it was the night before ours was uh, due, changes were due, and I uh, was like, uh-oh, <laughs> it's tomorrow. Um, and, and it does, it sneaks up on you. So knowing those dates ahead of time and really like, you know, a few days before reviewing, because it does take some time to, to go through and to find... Um, and I have, you know, if I'm being full, full disclosure, Patrick and I are like, oh, okay, well, we have a life event coming up in February. <laughs> so if we screwed up, we can review it again in a couple months. But uh, not all, that's not always the case. True. Not always having a baby. And I do, I want to mention these um, areas that we should just have in the back of our brain. So get a pencil or paper or go to the link to get that toolkit. But as bleeding disorder, families and individuals, the questions we need to ask ourselves as we're researching plans, um, number one, is your clotting factor covered? And if so, is it a major medical or pharmacy benefit? That's very important to know which one. That's huge. Um, do, do I have a choice in more than one specialty pharmacy provider? And if so, what are my choices? That always hits people by surprise. Um, they yep. have a very you know comfy pharmacy provider. Um, and then all of a sudden their plan won't allow it. Um, and uh, MASAC, actually, this is, this is great, which will help you advocate in the future if this happens to you, if you only have one choice to go. MASAC recommends that you have at least two, and one of those should be your HTC 340B pharmacy program. So if you find yourself in a situation where you only have one, you have, um, you have some tools there to advocate for yourself. 
Number three is my hemophilia treatment center in network. And this is also tricky as well. Some of the facilities are in network, but the physicians are or not, and vice versa. Sometimes the physicians are in network, but the facility is not. The University of Colorado is not in network, but Dr. Mike Wong is in network. It's the worst. Mind um, numbing. I know, <laughs> it's insane. Do manufacturer copay cards count towards my deductible or out of pocket? This is all of that stuff um, that we have been worried about. Um, that is very important. And if you have an employer sponsored plan, so if you have big national employer sponsored plans, if, if you have um, a job through a big employer, this is something to find out about and you will go to your HR department to ask those questions, which is kind of crazy. Um, what services require prior authorization and this is a good one that i haven't really um voiced but this is really important our physical therapy services covered is home nursing covered especially for our older population mm. home nursing is um, something that's really important that i can tell they've added to this list so that toolkit please check out that toolkit it will give you a blow by blow of what the questions you need to ask the the papers you need to get and uh let's set ourselves up great for 2021 Hey, community members, I wanted to bring something to your attention. The SBAC grant program, which is the state-based advocacy grant program out of NHF, out of the National Hemophilia Foundation, is opening up their grant program to way more states than before. Because it's virtual, they're able to give more money to more states. And I wanted you to know this because some states, some state chapters, are not excited about doing a grant for state-based advocacy. But if they hear from you, Oh, community member, maybe they will be more excited to do that. This grant um, provides funding and also resources and actually education, educating your chapter uh, representatives um, on how to advocate better, more efficient at the state level. And so if you have not uh, been in contact with your chapter leader about the SBAC program, the state-based advocacy program, I don't know, maybe you should just email your chapter ED and say, hey, what gives? Are we involved in this program? We'll give more information about it next week when grants um, are open, when those grant applications are open. But uh, it might be worth your while to email your chapter ED or your program manager or your board president at your local organization. Yeah, it's a great point how it's it's a, it's offered to more chapters now in this in, in virtual 2021 that we'll be going into. So we will come back. Um, next week, we'll have our Thanksgiving episode. But after that, we'll, there'll be more information available and we'll bring it to you as soon as it is. Um, so thanks, Amy, for that heads up and more on that to come. But for now, let us go to the interview with uh, this guy. He is uh, he's a fountain of energy and brightness and positivity. He's an actor, rapper, and nerd, at least according to his website, and uh, he's a great interview. So enjoy this conversation with Damian Washington. I'm joined by my friend, fellow health advocate, and according to his website, actor, rapper, and nerd, although he does a lot of other stuff too, Damian Washington. Good morning, Damian. How you doing, man? Good morning, BJL in the build, man. I'm so happy to be here chopping it up with you right now. <laughs> I love that orange wall behind you. There's such energy coming off of that. I, I, you got the, one of the best backgrounds I've seen in all this quarantine zooming that I've done. You might, <laughs> you're up there for best background. No, I appreciate that. Thank you. Honestly, uh, without my uh, wife um, and partner of like 20 years, I would just, my home would, you know, I would have a computer on a box in a corner <laughs> and like, you know, <laughs> like some kale and hot pockets in the kitchen. That'd be it. So nice. like anything with like style, um, it's all my lady. So I'm very glad that this is what became you know, I'm through depressed her. you'd have kale without her because without my yeah. wife, it would be like pizza and reheated pizza. 20 years. So wh when did you first meet your wife? Oh, college, man. We got the same scholarship to college, uh, to Middlebury College. But um, we, you know, we were just friends for, you know, a couple of years before. And then after that, it was just kind of I, me. I was like. You're the most beautiful woman I've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> I would like to do something about that. <laughs> let, let, let us change this relationship, the nature of this, this relationship, just a touch, not too much, just enough. And we're still I, kicking. So, I know that you were, um, you went to LaGuardia High School in New York, big performing arts high school. As a guy who also grew up in New York, I was well aware of it. Um, and I know you continued 
doing entertainment work in college as well. But one of the things that also jumps out to me is your int- you were an Eastern Asian religious studies um, double major, or can you tell us a little bit about that? That's kind of an interesting piece of your resume. I was a, at in Middlebury and the, um, the syllabus of the Eastern Asian religion courses sort of like appealed to me. Um, and I would, I'd go to the classes. The, the classes were cool. I actually read all the books. I got A's on all the papers. All of the people in the classes were my friends. And mm. um, like we started hanging out more and being more close. And like over after like, you know, a year and a half, two years of that, it was like, huh, I've done enough of these courses that I could get a minor if I make sure that I X, Y, and Z. And I did. And I had I have written a lot of papers and read a lot of books about uh, the Buddha and uh, how, you know, he has uh, not he has transformed society, but how Buddhist philosophy has, uh, you know, gone through the world. And um, it's been in in my life and my own experience as I was trying to figure out my own health journey the intellectual knowledge of all of that kind of be, became a, a, a practice for my my own self, like a way that I could reach out and trying to pull myself up out of the, the health pit that I was in, um, just because I was so familiar with it from college already. Hmm. What was the health pit that you were in? Tell, tell us a little bit about that. Man, I don't know, man. Like I, I, it, it, this, the symptoms, like the MS symptoms, man, like there, it just, different things at different times. And like uh, from getting a diagnosis um, to having spasticity in my knees, excuse me, not even getting a diagnosis, to having spasticity in my knees, horrible balance, this energy just sapped from me. As you can, you know, Mm -hmm. you feel me like I'm a super high energy dude. Like being, I was recording a music video and, I had a, fr- a bunch of friends over here and, you know, I had all the set up here. And so you have to set up and you put up the green screen and put up the camera and put in the lights and the dudes are coming in now. Yeah, okay. You do this and now get out of frame. You do that. Now get out of frame. I'll get in frame and I'll do this and next and, you know, so on and so forth. And like, that's standard for me. That's automatic for the people for me. And I was doing that and man, I was a wiped out like, that's a ton that's a ton hands and knees sucking air uh hands uh, all my hands and knees on the floor sucking air like i can't do this what mm-hmm. this is what i always do what is the problem um so th- those are symptoms like that not having any energy not having a horrible balance um having terrible vision <laughs> mm-hmm. and not really being able to walk half a block <laughs> that's where I began. When were you first diagnosed with MS? Uh, four years ago. So it's like 2016 ish, 20. Yeah. 2016 ish. Yeah. Do, do you remember that the, the moment where it was first presented to you? Again, man, I just had all these strange health things and my wife, Angela, she just was like, yo, bro, will you lean on me differently when we walk down the street together? And as this lady, she's been around for a long time, uh, at that point, 16 or so years. Uh, and so she's just like, look, something's off, man. You've been, you've been, you and I have been walking down the street <laughs> with each other for 16 years. You are holding me differently now. And it's out of nowhere and it's strange. And I, we got to figure this out. Um, so it was, it's things like that, that just, just began the like, yo, I really, uh, plus the music video, plus just a whole bunch of little things was like, yo, I got to really figure out what's wrong with me. And hmm. you know what the, the, because it was walking, I went to the foot doctor and all like all that stuff. And he, they were like, uh, I don't know uh, you, but something's wrong with you. Like your gait is off. Like my ophthalmologist was like, as I was getting my checkup for glasses, she's like, well, your eyes are fine, but you clearly can't see these things. Um, it, it just different doctors were like, well, yeah, I don't know what's wrong with you, but something's clearly wrong with you. Um, mm. And then we took a walk. Um, I couldn't even make it halfway down the block. And I came back home and I tried to take off my shoes and I fell. And I'm just kind of looking at the ceiling. And uh, wow. Angela's like, all right, we're going to emergency care. We're not leaving until we know what's wrong with you. And the tech there, uh, the doc was like, well, I'm sure she knew because she is what she do. She was like, mm, I don't know, but go have an MRI and we'll see. And the MRI was like, oh yeah, this guy, he's totally healthy. He totally 
He has multiple sclerosis, though. He needs to get a neurologist ASAP. <laughs> okay. And now that, that's that's now here I am. <laughs> so where were you? You know, I, I mentioned at the top you're you were an, you're an actor. Um, some of the things that are at the front of your website, like you're in this commercial with Shaq. You you're in a commer You have commercials for Planet Fitness, McDonald's, Buffalo Wild Wings, Realtor.com. You've done a lot of hosting. You're a busy guy. Where were you in your career as this start as these symptoms started to set in, and then you got this diagnosis? What, what, tell us about that. I've certainly. Um, I, I pause just because you know the biz is up and down and up and down. Anyway, sure. But I, yeah, of course. It was. It just was one of those points. Like I'm doing commercials. I'm still gigging. I'm still you know out here like during the realtor.com commercial, for instance, like I had to hold the dog and hit the mark and, and do all of this. And it wasn't too hot, but I was like, well, I, I can't hold the dog and hit this mark out here, but too many more times. I don't care if you are Elizabeth <laughs> yeah. Banks. I don't care if there's like 30 <laughs> people here, but I'm not telling anybody, but I know I need right. a break in like seven minutes, bro. Let's just keep it together, Damien, for another seven minutes. Yeah. It's, it's, it's sort of things like that. Um, I, so I have certainly worked in the middle of my, my stuff and through my diagnosis and continue to um, work my life so that I can show up as my best self as often as possible, regardless. Was there a moment after your diagnosis for the first time where you had either booked a gig or had some kind of professional opportunity that let you know, you know, all right, I'm, I'm going I'm to be okay. Yo, it's funny you asked that, man. Um, I really don't remember the first spot I got after my diagnosis, but it was like a little while afterwards. Um, and just kind of getting back to more uh, normal, normally appearing health, <laughs> not sh shaky gait or like, you know, all slow and unsteady and just sort of getting to that place and then just going into my rooms and have, having my technique and just listen, just making sure you're being active and still not booking and be like, it's cool, bro. It's cool. Just keep doing mm -hmm. what you do. <laughs> um, that's, that's really sort of like the toughest part. And then like, uh, as that passed, I, I really don't remember the amount of time, but it was quite some time before I started getting post-diagnosis back into booking again. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and how quickly post-diagnosis did you start the No Stress MS YouTube channel and, and why? It became no stress MS. I think after diagnosis, I started vlogging, period. Um, just because uh, another um, friend, a friend of mine from high school, and he's a colleague, because like he's out, he's got a show on Netflix and such. Um, he was saying, he's like, look, I got this vlog going on YouTube. It's awesome. Um, and I know you would be really good at this vlogging thing. I don't know what you vlog about. It really don't matter, but just, bro, you need to, you need to be doing uh, this. Out of, so he had no idea about vlog. MS. He was just like, you no, got a vlog. No. And for, uh, we, I counted the other day, 30 some odd episodes. <laughs> um, that's over half a year every week posting videos about like i got a haircut today like i <laughs> my wife and i are going to mauritius you don't even know where mauritius is like <laughs> that type of <laughs> just i don't know what i'm making but i'm making it every single week um that sort of came out of like um as i was getting my ms diagnosis confirmed i had a um a spinal tap and it didn't heal properly and I was on bed rest for, you know, 12 days. And like, all I could do was pee and sleep. Otherwise, like I was in the excruciating pain. Cause I don't know, there was a hole in my spine then it was yeah, leaking fluid, painful. bro. <laughs> no, so you, you no really thank you. Much. But as I was flat on my back those two weeks, I was like, yo bro, what you got to start doing something, man. Like you're not always going to be like this. So what are you going to do? when you are not like this. And the vlogging thing was, you know, something people said that, you know, I needed to do, but, and I, I always had the, whatever the fear or whatever the, not a fear, but just sort of, eh, push it, keep punting that ball. Um, right. Whatever it was, as I was on that bed rest, I was like, well, shit, let's, let's do this. And then I started making the videos about the haircuts, about the vacations, about the, and nobody watched. And the videos about MS, thousands of people watched. 
And so I would go go back continuing to make my videos and nobody watched. And so I'd make another <laughs> MS video. And thank- Okay, we got it. You got a haircut. That's good. So, Tell us about you your know, exa- again. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. And so I was like, well, you got to give the people what you want. I don't want to be the MS guy, but right. it looks like I'm the MS guy. <laughs> I just started pumping out MS videos. Um, and so far, so not so far, so good, but like it just keeps blossoming into wonderful things like you and the, the channel and all the people that I'm in touch with, you know? Yeah, well, I mean, you just co-hosted the MS Society's first virtual event, which, if I'm not mistaken, raised over a million dollars. Is that right? Because we out here, JPL. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, um, again, the and a lot of uh, people say that they try to find the silver lining on things uh, sure. I mean, on the dark cloud. I mean, I'm me, I'm like, I have just started saying, like, I'm turning poop into flowers. Like, there the, you go. this diagnosis, this disease has left a gigantic pile of poop at my doorstep and I'm, <laughs> and I'm working with it, man. And it, it, it's turned into the, the, the relationships that blossom, the community that has blossomed, the, uh, j- those are the flowers that could have only been so bright and so vibrant. Um, it, it could only be that vibrant uh, because of the fertilizer, so to speak. Um, and that's kind of the the spin that I take on it all. Like even as, you know, my knees be spastic as I sit and I'm talking to my friends on their podcast. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> like, like right now? Like um, right now. <laughs> you mentioned the community and it's something we talk a lot about in bleeding disorders. You know, there's the medical piece, the clinical piece, the diagnosis, the treatments, the regimens, the self-care. But then there's also the community support, the people who sh- share some lived experience. What did you start learning about MS as you're putting these videos out there and people from the MS community are coming forward? What, what did you start to learn? Man, I just started to see how people just needed to have another person to listen to, to empathize with, to relate to, uh, to connect with. And everybody's, um, everyone has to play the ball themselves, so to speak. Uh, but it's nice to um, have not, this metaphor is not going to work. Never mind, scrap it. Uh, <laughs> sorry, like that, yeah, scrap it. Bottom line, um, having someone else to relate to, even if they don't share the same symptoms, um, works. And especially if like in a lot of the marketing, um, you don't see yourself in it or like people are just, they're happy and walking in the woods because they're on this medication. It's like, well, medication or not, I'm not gonna be happy and walking in the woods with my kids by the creek. <laughs> I don't, I don't, it doesn't resonate with me. And it doesn't make me feel as like I'm included. And so it's just sort of, well, my symptoms aren't like that. And I don't feel like I'm, you know, walking to the creek by my kids. So I am now another step farther back. This disease, again, removes me from the world around me and such. Um, yeah. So that's kind of why it's, it's the biggest gift being able to be in a space in which the things that make me me um are not only welcomed but needed and mm. desired and helps whomever at any different time i said punt the ball ball earlier but just move think differently and then perhaps move differently and if not then just <sighs> the sigh of relief of having someone else either hear you, see you, um, be recognize you and you recognize yourself in them. Yes. Yeah. Well, to that point too, and talking about representation, I know you also have a position, I think it's within the MS society, um, but specific to the black experience with MS. Can, can you talk a little about that what, in terms of seeing yourself represented and, and what it means to have a shared experience? What is that experience and what, what are you, what need are you filling there? Well, it's the idea that um, one of the first thoughts when I got diagnosed is <laughs> like, when I got MS, ain't that a white lady disease? Wait, hold on. What's the, who the black man would who have MS? Uh, uh, Richard Pryor? <laughs> well, it didn't end up very well for him. Montel? Oh, well, okay. I guess Montel's cool and successful. I'm still thinking. There's the list. Yeah. <laughs> like, and that was it. 
So that's kind wow. of, you know, the things that my brain did. And as just sort of me being me became me talking about MS and I began to be in this space, it's like, oh, okay, nah. The more I learned that about MS in general and how um, often times African-Americans can experience a, a greater amount of disease progression and a disease, disease severity. Just looking at the numbers, that's what the nerds have um, concluded. Uh, so that, 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 that's a one. Uh, mm -hmm. So if I can be um, another a person of that population and the population within that population um, to not only bring more folk together, but provide um, information, laughs, uh, whatever resource, whatever to the, the population at large. And yeah, man, I'm gonna do that, man. I'm suiting up and I'm automatic for the people. I said it already, but like, yo, this, yo, it's what it is, man. Let's go every week. Although I am late this, I am late this week and I really don't know if the vlog will come out, uh, but we'll see. <laughs> but isn't that always the case? Isn't it always just until like pens down or until final delivery? It's like, I don't know if this is going to happen. And it always does. It always does. <laughs> you know that already. <laughs> um, I know we only have a few more minutes and there's so many things I want to ask you about, but we'll just have to have you back at some point. Uh, so what are you working on right now? 2020 has been a crazy year. We talked earlier this year about like, you know, when it was first setting in and the quarantine auditions. And yeah. I think that was back in, you know, March or April when we talked last. So fill me in. What's been going on with you since? Yeah, you know, the auditions are, are trickling, in and, trickling in and that's great. Uh, the Zoom auditions. So, you know, I have one of those later. Um, but it's really just about continuing to shift this content. I'm, I'm lucky enough to have been the recipient of the 2020 Wico Health Award for Best Series YouTube. Oh, nice. So Congrats. That, thank you. Thank you. So that is like, got, just placed me in a different set of people and just, right. uh, I'm now talking to these folks and just, so I say that to be like, yeah, no, what's the next thing is like, hopefully these commercials keep coming, come back and I book and I, you know, do what I have done for the past nine years consistently. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, but seeing where the vlog takes me and how um, colorful and fragrant these flowers that um, I'm using this MS poop uh, to grow uh, and that are growing and just keep cultivating them and um, working them. And so it's building more community. It's um, uh, working more closely with pharma if I can, you know, these, there are a couple of, um, there's already been a couple of things already um, that are going to come out uh, in another Great. week or so. But so, but just doing more of that type of, I'm working with pharma now, I'm working with this MS organization now, that type of stuff, you know? So where, where are these things coming out? Where should people go to see what you've done? Obviously, we talked about the No Stress MS yeah. YouTube channel, so that's a home base. Yeah. Where else? Yeah, no, I def definitely go to DamienWashington.com. Uh, that's where you get all your DW news. <laughs> and whatever video I got going, um, I'll just I'll be putting it there. Um, and yeah. Great. That's easy. So DamienWashington.com. There'll be a link in the program notes if you can't remember DamienWashington.com. Uh, my last question to you, Damien, as we just mentioned, 2020, it has been a year of the unexpected and the chaotic and the I don't know what else. But we're coming up on Thanksgiving next Thursday. Time to be grateful. End of the year. What are you grateful for as we approach Thanksgiving 2020 and look ahead to 2021? I am grateful for two things. Um, the stillness that I continue to find in me and the the people i continue to find around me you my wife uh the subscribers like all all shapes and sizes and different rings and degrees the more i connect with people um the, the more uh, i'm in touch with uh, connect with people and also myself uh, the more I, I get to understand what makes us vibe as humans and what makes us great and separate from everything else in the animal kingdom. And because we have this golden ticket, so to speak, how can we continue mm. to, to make it the best that we can, even when the world is like, and crushing <laughs> you, you know what I'm saying? I'm grateful Absolutely. for that. 
That's beautiful. That's beautiful. Well, man, thank you. You're such a light. It's great to have you here. I will have to have you back in the new year to catch up. DamienWashington.com to catch up with everything he's doing, the No Stress MS blog and all the rest of it. Damien, man, thank you so much. And good luck today at your audition. Oh, thank you, man. I appreciate you, Patrick, man. And thank you for the space uh, that, that you hold uh, for, for, for folk with hemophilia, for folk with, just again, any chronic disease, man. If you got something going yeah. on inside of you, and that's the thing, I didn't say something wrong that's that no that's not what i mean to say if you have something going right. on inside of you you need um other folk who understand what that is and what the trials and tribulations of life with that thing going on inside you are and you mm -hmm. hold that space uh for these other folks so well and you facilitate the conversation and you you, you make the media uh to help bring these feelings that are you know more of uh, more layers into people up to the surface and for them to feel and for them to connect and for them to continue to evolve their own thing. So respect and appreciation to you and thank you for what you do, man. Thank you. Super big respect, man. Oh, man, I appreciate that. Thank you, Damien. Take care. Peace, peace. Thanks again, Damien. Check out his website, DamienWashington.com. Check out his YouTube channel, No Stress MS. And best of luck, good sir, in everything ahead for you in 2021. Quite deserving. Um, Amy, Natalie, I'm sorry to say that that is all for this episode. We'll be back next week for a special Thanksgiving episode. Special thanks in the meantime to everyone at Bloodstream Media and Believe Limited who makes the Bloodstream podcast possible. Thanks to our interview guest, Damian Washington, and thanks to our presenting sponsor, Takeda. Bleedingdisorders.com to learn more about their resources for and commitment to the Bleeding Disorders community. You can subscribe to the Bloodstream podcast. Did you know that? On Apple, Spotify, SoundCloud, wherever you can find podcasts. Subscribe everywhere and tell everyone. Leave us a rating in the Apple store if you would. Five stars are our favorite. Four stars are pretty good. Three, that's kind of offensive. Share this episode with a friend or uh, just a person or share any episode of Bloodstream with anyone. We covered a lot of topics. You've got to have at least one person that you know that's got some topic in some episode that they would want to hear about. So plus word of mouth is really the best way we reach new people. So word that mouth. Have a bleeding disorders or health topic you'd like to hear us discuss more? Do you want to inquire about casting opportunities for upcoming podcast series? Are you just running out of great places to send emails? Don't worry, we've got you covered. Amy Board, what's that email address? Oh, God. Oh, mailbag at bloodstreammedia.com. Yes! How was that? Okay, great, you great, did it. great, great. Connect with Bloodstream Media on social media. You'll find Bloodstream Media on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, or you can follow Amy Board, Natalie Lynch, or Patrick James Lynch on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, or LinkedIn. Shout out to all the committed LinkedIn users out there. Check out the program notes for this episode in your podcast player or on bloodstreammedia.com, where you'll find links and information related to the stories and segments featured on this episode. I'm your host, Patrick James Lynch. And I'm that other host, Amy Board. And I'm Natalie Lynch. And sometimes I, too, am your host. Still true. And until next time, take self-care of yourself. Bye, everybody. <laughs>